the last year, I've been asking, who am I really? Every random, like, you know, not every day, but, you know, Joe's mentioned it multiple times. So when I went on my journey, um, I stopped at a friend's house before I got went to my mom's house. Um, that friend, uh, she, it was, it's a friend of both of ours, and she just felt to tell me how she did not like me. <laughs> And it's like, just off the bat, it's just like, you know, Cindy, I really didn't like you. And I'm like, okay, heard that before. <laughs> so I was like, I can't, so I'm pretty numb to that. Um, and then, you know, I go to visit my mom and my mom like blows her lid at me like a good three times. And I'm just like, I revert back to like old ways of being. And then I'm like, I'm aware that this is happening and I want it to be different, but I don't understand what it is. Um, and then, and then I had made a plan to leave my mom's go, um, drive North and stay with a friend overnight and went there and I got triggered by a uh, text. And, um, uh, then it sent me in another, like, uh, like devaluing of myself, like pattern. So on my way up to that journey to that friend's house, Joe had suggested to me, he said, Cindy, ask the universe to help you let go of your defenses. So I was like, okay, <laughs> like that sounds like harmless enough, right? So I'm like, okay, let go of my defenses. And, you know, did a big prayer over that and whatnot. And then, and then everything just came to a head. And it was like a culmination of all of these events. And I started like unraveling like a mess of thoughts. Like, again, I didn't know which direction I was thinking. It's like, I, I know how, that this is an experience that's happening for a reason. I don't know how or why, whatever, right? So it's like, the, I just need to get home and be around Joe to help me to see myself through this, right? So help is always a good thing. Um, but then there's that willingness inside yourself to see through it and not get stuck in the old patterns of being. So when I was talking with Joe, like every day about this topic, like it feels like it's really burning out now. So I'm I'm happy about that. Um, but I am recognizing that our true selves is that light energy that is connected to God. So who am I really? It is like, I am this light. And all of these other identities of self of me got triggered and they go into defense mode to protect themselves. So defenses, letting go down of your defenses. So my identity as a friend, um, as a daughter, as a sister, you know, and as a partner, you know, like all of these identities all got triggered. <laughs> and it was like all of them. <laughs> just like, and then so of course I go into this defensive pattern because I've been doing it my whole life because I'm thinking like I'm lovable if I do this. And I'm like, that's none of it was really true. Um, and that's like hard to kind of wrap your mind around. I'm like, Joe, you told me to let go of my defenses and look what happened. I'm a mess. <laughs> so I got what I asked for, but then I also recognizing that I'm, I'm understanding who I am really a lot more because there was an unraveling of all these <clears throat> pretend selves that I was pretending <laughs> to be. Um, and that's something else I asked for. So I'm in this process of discovering something so with a uh, prayer, I always like when we get to the solar plex, I say there's filters, things that we start um, thinking that's ourselves because we're just little children and we see grandma being a certain way. So we're like, well, I'm going to become grandma because everybody loves grandma. So there's something there I'm going to put in. I'm going to carry this filter. And you see a lot of people and you start creating. It's like taking little pieces of puzzle and putting this really jumbled mess together and you get further in life one day, and you, that's where I say in, in your solar plex, you have all these cords to people, you have all these distortions, but who are you really? And that's where you release your defenses, and you start realizing, well, why am I trying to be like this to make this person happy? But when I go and I sit with this other person, I all of a sudden become this. But say my uncle walked in the door, and all of a sudden, I'm this little five-year-old trying to please my uncle. It's like, that becomes really, really confusing. And this is where a lot of years I've been trying to help Cindy understand that subconscious. And that's where the child spirit, which is the ego or the angelic oversoul, knows how to play these games. 
whatever you believe or decide, you're going to generate an energy, you're going to open up things, and you're going to attract people that you believe is love or light or these different things. And it can get very confusing. Because in the truth, who are you really? When you're just energy, you're light, you came here. Many, many past lives. That's where people, when they go into their past life regression, they see themselves as Cleopatra. So all of a sudden, they're going around telling everybody, I'm Cleopatra, you know, I'm going to be rich. You're supposed to bow down to me. And, or they activate their base chakra, and all of a sudden, they're Jesus or Mary Magdalena and all this. And they get really, really confused, and they go down these paths. This is where people a lot of times become schizophrenic and they, they attract things. They try to force things too much. And that's where you got to really sit with yourself. And I discovered that in the native ceremonies is to go inside and sit, like go in here somewhere and really look at the many filters. Like, why do I want to make my mom happy this way? Or my sister or my brothers. It's like when I go visit, Oh, we would come over for a birthday party. And then I dress up like a clown and I go there and, pretend to be happy the clown or whatever it is and I'm like I don't want to identify myself as happy the clown every time I go to my brothers it's like or I go over to my my friend you know the hubcap manifester and I, I bring in the ringing tambourines every time I go in there I do the ringing tambourines like oh and he's just jumping around again you know and, it, and it's confusing it's like no I just want to be me after a period of time people started attacking me People start trying to force you to change or fit into what they think because your light is so strong, it's bringing all their garbage to the surface. This is something I had to figure out for about the first 17 years of my life. And it was really scary because my granddad wouldn't teach and tell me about it. And people would tell me, even if you're 10 blocks away, we can feel your energy coming and they would get scared. And I wouldn't shut it down. I push my energy out more and I'd even let people know I'm coming and they could feel me. But for a lot of women, as a little girls, they distorted that. And so they started creating all these different things. And Cindy, like I say, all of you guys, you have this light. So that's the long version of it. Uh, and Joe just said to me, he's like, Cindy, your light is so bright that when you're with somebody, it brings up their darkness. And it's like, my light is there to bring up their darkness so that they can heal their darkness so that they can see and change it. But out of patterning, they react. And so they look at me as the bad guy and that it's my fault um, when really it's all inside of them. Mm -hmm. And it was like so simple. And all of a sudden, it just made sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like going around at all these little instances. And I was like, it's weird when I walk into the room, like I went for lunch with my, my two sisters were there. They met my mom and I. And so we walk and sat down and all of a sudden there was this weird exchange between my two sisters confessing like their, um, their hangups and they're like apologizing to each other. And I'm just watching this. I'm like, where did this come from? And why is this happening? And then I thought, Oh, is it because of that light energy that came in with us? And all of a sudden they felt this need to do this thing that because, healed them <laughs> and cindy whenever she's around her family she wants to heal them and that and it just does all these things when she went to new york she had a really bad experience with her sister she brought all of their shit to the surface it was she came back to just bad stuff it took me two weeks to clear her energy ground her and it just destroyed her and finally i was able to help her see through it all and then she and then she's just back in her life and she's just like carrying on uh, one of the things that like Joe was saying here in the beginning, like he was holding his solar plexus and I'm not sure if he said it's in your solar plexus, but um, he, one of the things I added to my prayer was to unlock my chakras. And it feels like there's a lot of like, you know, hidden little compartments of old scars and stuff that I'm defending and protecting. So let go down in your defenses, unlock your chakras. And I recognize that in my thought patterns um, are the keys that will unlock my chakras. Because it's like, that's what's keeping me stuck in the same old personalities of I, the identities that I'm protecting and defending. 
And when I can catch it and then start seeing my way through it, it's like I get this different light energy that comes in, I want to say, which is like a key. And that unlocks the energy so that I feel something different. So I just wanted to offer you that as something to ponder for yourself. See where your thoughts are going, because that is going to lead you to something because no one's thinking for you. You're doing it yourself. And then we were talking about the light and the dark. The, the, if you take the color black, it's all the colors. You take the color white, it's all the colors. There's two spectrums. That's where yin and yang is a really important thing to understand how it moves and fluctuates and how it plays games and balances. Because you go into the darkness and you go deep enough, you're going to actually see the light there. And you'll actually see all the colors. You go into the light, first it gets really, really white, then it gets really, really bright, and then all of a sudden, there's all the colors, then you see everything, like the TV is turned on and the movie is there. And when you go into either one of these, you can see reality, and you can see into the past, or you can see into the future, or you can see into now, and there's these two different dualities and spectrums. And it's like being neutral in the center, but being able to see the light and being able to see the dark, because they show everything. And the dark is a little slower, it's a little more denser. In, in the other one, it's very, very fast. You can move into the future thousands of years. You can even see lifetimes thousands of years into the future. What you're going to create, manifest reality, what you're going to change and do, who you're going to attract, how you're going to heal people. Very, very powerful. People do not really fully understand the symbol of the yin and yang. It's been very distorted and just people just see it. But there's a, there's a really deep truth. This is where it's like, I always like asking you guys. So who are you really? I love asking Cindy that I've been doing it for 12 years. There's times I'll ask Mercedes. It's like, who are you really? Because there's times I see Mercedes when she really allows her soul and light comes in and she's just like, oh, this really amazing person. I see it with Cindy. I see it with other people. I'm like, that's the real you. And if you can realize and stay in that energy, man, it's magical. Like right at this moment, I feel like a nervous energy in my stomach or solar plexus, almost like, and then it feels like everything's moving rapidly in my mind. And I'm trying to discern like what it is in my mind, why I'm feeling that feeling. And so it's like, it's darting all over the place. And Cindy is starting to understand and, and really become more conscious of hooks. Like this oh, yeah. morning, she <laughs> nailed one. She's like, oh, my God. And she realized that something had gone on yesterday evening. She didn't understand. She didn't even tell me until this morning because I was picking up stuff with her. And if she had said something, I would have went in, opened it up and, and gave her clarity. But mm -hmm. until this morning, uh, then she brought it up. And I was like, oh, OK, now I understand why I was picking up all those things. And she is like, oh, and then all of a sudden, like bells went off in her head and just so many more things were coming through. And I'm like, this is really cool. And that's where it's like I try to step out and allow her to choose, like where she feels safe to expand and open up and just be there and be OK with it. A lot of that there, I have to add, is that the per oh, yeah, that was right, that there was a poem that I heard yesterday and a piece of that poem said about how words can take me from who I am into who I was. Mm -hmm. And it's like, Oh shit. You know, like we know who we were so well, especially with people like friends and family. That's who I was. I am a different person here in the, in this moment, but you say something, my mom says something, I can easily revert back to who I was. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like really catching it in that moment. It's like, I have this nervousness in my, my body right now. And it's like, I can, I know I can go into being a very submissive person, just let Joe talk and, you know, like um, be quiet. It's okay. And then it's over. And I carry on with my day. Or I can be like, wait, and I can question it. What is this? And, and, and allow new thoughts to come in in that moment to open up that door. So it's like I have the choice. And where Joe says, let her choose, let her choose. You guys choose. Um, do you want to open the door to go further? Or do you want to go back to who you were? 
because who you were helped you. And, and it was like, was Zarina asked, did you survive your weekend? And well, like, shit, that's exactly what I did. I survived it so I could get through it. And now I'm like, okay, like, how do I change from survival to like totally expanding myself? And that's part of, of the dissecting in that you need to take yeah. pieces apart and see them. Um, since I moved into Sydney life and like even Mercedes, like they access this genius part of themselves and then they close it down. All of a sudden it's like, no, I'm not smart. No, I'm not this, but somewhere their soul <clears throat> comes in and all of a sudden they start speaking and everything and they just start channeling and being everything. And then after a while they shut it off and then they, they go back as, but I don't know anything in this and that. And I'm like, but you're just in it. You guys freaking had access to everything in creation. And I told Cindy that I says, if you were to join the police, you would be one of these detectives that you would find this tiniest, tiniest little dust and you would prove it came from France and it came from this guy's jacket and he was a murderer or whatever. And I'm like, you have that brain. You find something nobody can see. Like we're protecting our fears, allowing them to keep us in this place, like people pleasing keeps us safe, uh, that when your fears come up, like when you're threatened or triggered, we'll just say, um, and that is activating one of your fears and it's an opportunity. Then it's like, oh, so the universe is saying is like, are you this fear? And you know, it's, it's really an illusion. You know, it doesn't make sense. Like, unless it's inside of you to want to see these things, will it ever change? Desire has to come from within you. Yeah, and we're not taught this as children. And this is where my granddad always sat me down. And there were times I thought he was being so mean and brutal. And he, like, I'd be sitting there and one of my friends come over, just an innocent little kid. But my granddad is looking at him when he's 18 and 19. And he sees this person being really nasty and mean. He's like, this kid, the person. And I'm like, we're just going to go and play outside. We're just going to roll around in the grass and laugh and play under the sun and he's like now you sit here and look and I'm like but I don't want to look because when I see that I don't want to play with these kids anymore as I now know how dark they are and all the things are going to do bad in that and then I'm like how do I now play with them how do I not try to talk about their future how do I try not to do this and I still try to support them because somewhere they're still going to come in and I'm going to my life somewhere they're still going to do things and maybe I'm meant to teach them or something so how do I support them but how do I not become passive mm -hmm. so now I'm you know um, enabler yeah uh, shaking my tambourine or oh. becoming a clown or you know so they're just happy every time I come there's like Ooh, there's the clown shaker <laughs> you know Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, whatever and it's just like I don't want to go into that. It's, and it's like our parents don't cheat, teach us to understand the distinguishing thing through supporting because supporting is being there and just being you. And people accept you for who you are, whether you, uh, you know, live in the lowest poverty or you live in the richest environment or you're in between and they accept you that way. But when we're children, we see how, you know, certain people are passive that make people happy and we start realizing well we can do this and if I want something I'm going to do this because I know my uncle will give me this or my aunt or my mom is going to make me the peanut butter cookies so I'm going to become passive so she's smiling like, would you like peanut butter cookies today yeah and you, <laughs> and you just do all this crazy stuff right? got what I wanted <laughs> So they are really trying to understand passive and support. But then it's also because when it's passive, it becomes pleasing and that's distortion. And when it's support, sometimes it's changing. Like, because if you're supporting something, you're trying to stay in who you are, but they want you to go back to an old way. Yeah. Because they're so used to being that and they want to fit in that box and they want to be happy. So in that, that place, they don't want to accept change. So they will try to push you and help you to move backwards and stay the old way. And instead of going, well, I'm going to see you change and then I'm going to do the same thing. So now we can move into a whole new reality. And this is where with me, I got to support like 
there's times I, I know I, I triggered Cindy and I could feel everything going off like firecrackers. And I'm like, ooh, today I'm walking on eggshells and glass, trying to be really careful. And you, know? you will tomorrow too. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, got this big whip, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, it's just trying to see his mind, right? And then at a certain point, she recognizes and then she goes, oh, oh whoops. And something changes. <laughs> And then as something opens up and she realizes I'm supporting her. I'm not trying to push <laughs> anything. I'm not trying to do this, but I'm not going into being passive. Because yeah. if I do, then, you know, we're going to be in the kitchen making the cookies. <laughs> and I'm going to be shaking the tambourine. Yes, mommy. That's what I wanted. <laughs> Make the cookies. <laughs> very, very uh, animated today. <laughs> And then I want to just offer that to you. What will you allow to take you from who you are today into who you were yesterday, to who you were in the past? Like you're going to allow words to take you from I am to I was, or you're not. And the thing, if you really love yourself, you're going to go in your light. You're going to really stay in that truth. And this is where people will keep doing things. And then later on, they'll realize I was just holding this energy. I am there supporting, but I don't want to go to this passive. I don't want to rob you of something so big and beautiful. I don't want to take away all these things. I don't want to interfere with your choices, where you're going, what you're manifesting, because it's there. But if I go passive, then I'm just pulling you back into an old and then I'm distorting it. Later, you're going to be hurt. You're like, why did you bring me down? Why did you hold me in this lower place? And this is where with me and Cindy, I've always tried to lift it. And I do do that for just about anybody. And now with my experiences over the last week, they helped me to see and know my light. You know, like these people are also showing this to you, right? Through the adversity. So it's like, I want to know my light. I want to know who I am really. And then I can be in that today. Mm -hmm.